Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life mister, sacred serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have a great show. Our girl Sarah Colonna will be here in a minute. I just wanted to cover a couple things. First of all, I want to talk about Army Hammer. He did a very long interview for Air Mail, which is a part of Vanity Fair. Um, I read the whole article. I also listened to an interview with the writer who interviewed him. So let me just tell you what the scoop is. You remember Army Hammer? You remember when all that stuff came out? We were in the height of the pandemic, and it was pretty freaking juicy. I was obsessed with it. Is he a cannibal or not? Because it was revealed by this woman, House of Effie, and two other girls that he dated, some of whom he dated, I think all three of them, while he might have been still married and not even separated, um, in which he asked to take their rib and cook it, and I'm 100% cannibal and everything. All those DMs with these girls were shared. So we were all like, what is going on? Is he a cannibal? These girls talked about, they were very young. I think one was like 22. He was about 39 at the time. Talked about, you know, how how scary it was and how awful. Then, so he, his wife and he are getting divorced. And then this you know, a little while ago, The House of Hammer came out, which was a documentary, which I felt really did not get much buzz. And I'm like, I think people are just like over this story. And I think it's really interesting. Some of the things that became so popular, I talked about this um, on my extra juicy subscription page of how things kind of just hit during this certain time of COVID and became so popular. One being Tiger King. I just saw that the what was the girl's name? The the one that I Carol Carol Baskin. Baskin. Apparently, her husband is was found and is alive. It's like nobody even cares. But at the time, we were all watching the Tiger King. So I think there's certain things that were just really heightened. And I think this one was really juicy and it got really heightened. So anyway, he you know was supposed to be in Shotgun Wedding. He lost a bunch of other movies, movies that were about to come out. Didn't really get the publicity that they wanted. They got divorced. He ended up in the Cayman Islands. He absolutely was selling timeshares in the Cayman Islands. He talks about this in this article. Um, this woman, House of Effie, her claim was that in their relationship, which was on and off and did involve S&M type of sexual fantasies, also involved, according to her, she said, a four-hour sexual assault. So with that, she hired Gloria Allred. But then she didn't go through with it, or Gloria Allred did not find her to be a credible witness. I don't know what happened, but nothing ever happened with criminal charges or even suing him, for that matter. The two other girls were the only ones featured in the documentary. So he gets divorced from his wife, and at one point, this woman, House of Effie, also reveals that the wife was corresponding with her saying, can you help me? Can we get together? Can you speak to this attorney? Because I'm trying to get full custody from Army Hammer and using your using you as a tool and as a person that he wasn't right with and abused will really help me get complete and total custody. I don't trust him with my kids. Um, so she revealed that. Since then, the wife and he are now co-parenting lovely. Uh, he has rights to his kids alone without supervised visits. And now this article comes out. One of the things that comes out in the article, is he says he was um, molested, sexually abused by a pastor when he was 13. And the writer says he said he told two people. One was a childhood friend who has since passed. And the other is Cindy Garvey, who is the ex-wife of Steve Garvey. He's a famous baseball player. They went to, I went to school with the kids. I just remembered seeing them there. Anyway, she, I think, is very good friends with the mom. And they're all part of this, like, very evangelical type of church. So he says that, which is absolutely awful. But so who's the pastor? Is he still being a pastor? Army, please tell us. I mean, I know that if someone would said that, 
about a Catholic priest at my school, I'd be like, well, is the guy still teaching? Is he still a a priest at the at in the Catholic Church? Has he died? Who is he? You know, and if you, so, you're just not going to say because you don't want to deal with like legal ramifications. Well, don't you want to protect people? So, I'm a little suspicious of that piece of information, and I think this was a absolutely brilliant thing for him to do and a brilliant story to tell. The stories that he does tell in describing his life and his um, rehabilitation of everything sounds very rehearsed. Possibly maybe he's even told it a few other times in his life in different occasions. I'm very suspicious of it. His dad has since died. So soon he'll be at the memorial and we'll feel sorry for him with that because he doesn't say anything negative about his dad. The negativity, negativity in his life happened with this supposed pastor. And because of that awful inst instance, that's what made him want to take control of his own sexuality, which was just a kink fetish, and we should not kink shame. So the writer is very sympathetic to him. I don't know that we should just throw away people. He lost all these opportunities. I mean, look at all these big movies he did. The director of... Um, Say My Name. Is that the name of it? Say My Name. I always mix, mix it up. The main movie that, where he played a much older guy who was having uh, sex with a teenage boy that all of Hollywood loved that movie, you know, Oscar nods and everything. That director um, said, I love him and I don't care what anyone says. I can't wait to work with him again. Call Me By Your Name. Call Me By Your Name is the name of the movie. So um, I never, th I thought he was a great looking guy. I was, I loved him in that movie because he looked like my boyfriend in the 80s. Um, of course they do the photo where he looks ugly. When you do an apologetic article or video, you cannot look good. So he doesn't look great. He looks aged. He's not, you know, in the Cayman Islands in a photo shoot with like the sun setting on his face in the golden hour looking out at the ocean. He looks like shit. And, um, he's like, I wouldn't give up anything um, that happened in the last two years. I wouldn't change anything because it got me to such a healthier place of me like realizing why I was so fucked up. And these relationships were all consensual. I never sexu sexually assaulted anyone, including this woman, House of Effie. And, um, but, and he has some, some things to kind of back up a story that her story may not have been true. Um, according to him, like he hurt his shoulder and so therefore he wouldn't have been able to do what she said at that time. And he said, I would never have given any of that up because um, I am who I am now. So, oh, and he says, you know, that, that so it, again, you know, the kink shaming thing. You can't kink shame. This is S&M. This is a consensual thing. And, you know, this language, this Fifty Shades of Grey language. Um, so anyway, I had predicted before that I think he would go be in some other show, maybe not Oscar worthy type of stuff, because I think we're over him for being like the Oscar winner. But if the material is juicy and interesting enough and someone decides to cast him in it, then I think absolutely he'll work again as an actor. Maybe he'll work again opposite Amber Heard in some like juicy streaming series or movie for that's what I see happening next and um that's my prediction and I think the wife would like him to get working because she has two little kids with him and I think she would like some child support and I think she's happy to have a father around for her kids and if he really is behaving and Robert Downey Jr. helped him with rehab and now he's like a sober companion and a um you know a I, what do you call a mentor or whatever to other people struggling with addiction and sexual addiction and everything. But the story that he tells, this is such a great publicity move for him. And I'm sorry for everybody else that he hurt, but that that is what I think is going to come of it. And I thought it was um, whoever put it all together and sat down with him and figured out what he was going to say is a very smart person. Okay, now next, Robin Dixon, our girl from Real Housewives of Potomac. I talked about this before, whether you're watching the show or not, there was, in the show it was revealed that supposedly her husband, Juan, now it's her husband for the second time, they were married, They she was very honest in the early seasons that the reason they got divorced, they have two, young, two boys that are like teenagers, 
The reason that they got divorced is because he there was a big infidelity problem when he played professional basketball, whatnot. So they got divorced. When the show started, they were really getting along. They were living together. And then they started to date again. And then he asked her to marry him. And we were all waiting for this wedding to happen. And some of the cast members were criticizing her, like, Karen, it's not going to happen. This is all bullshit. This is the fake storyline. She wanted a prenup. She wanted a fidelity um, clause in there. Then this story comes out and she addresses it on her podcast with Giselle that D- did Juan have a woman that he was seeing? She says, yes, he, there was a girl that he was talking to on um, DM because he was bored during the pandemic. I don't know why you just didn't watch Tiger King, Juan, and and get into army hammer <laughs> cannibalism. But he took his time to DM randoms, this woman being random. Nothing happened, but we dealt with it. And I'll tell you on my Patreon. So... She does her Patreon, which is a paid subscription, and people listen to it and give us the scoop. And it was this story that now she told on Watch What Happens Live. So what she said on Watch What Happens Live, which Andy was not happy with her because there's a big controversy. You're supposed to share your life. You didn't share your life. And not only didn't you share it, but then you made fans pay for it um, on your paid subscription of your podcast. She goes, well, I did sell some on my podcast, but I... And then then he says to Ebony who is the former cast member of Real Housewives of New York. How do you feel about that, Ebony? She goes, I have a podcast, and I'm all about making that money. So I'm fine with that Robin did it. So she says, well, what happened? Andy was this girl, and they were DMing. They were just friends. The girl was actually coming from Canada to Maryland to um, see some other basketball player. So she calls Juan because she lost her wallet in the casino. And she's like, can you come here to the hotel and use your card? Because I don't have a credit card. I'm really upset and pay for my room. In which Juan is such a good guy that he went to go do that. But that was it. They did not hook up nothing. Robin didn't love it. But they went on to go get married by themselves with just her parents and her two sons. And this is her photo that she just posted. And she said, "Um, our way, our why. So it's big controversy, big housewife divide about should she be fired? Is she in trouble? Is this okay? I said I think the um, Bravo people need to really carve out the rules for these women and what they can share um, that during shooting time that they should only share during shooting time. She's like, this didn't even come up. I, I talked about it on my podcast once it was brought up on the episode prior to when I recorded and um, But I do want to say about this stupid story with Juan Dixon, you couldn't have said, all right, chill out, you weird woman I met on DM. Um, what hotel are you at? The Marriott in Georgetown? All right, all right. Let me just call and give my credit card over the phone and say, this is my friend. Please give her one night. No incidentals. Okay. She can buy her own breakfast in the morning, but she's this woman I met on DM, and I just feel bad because it's COVID. I don't see why I had to go down there and do that. Anyway, the story is so ridiculous that I said, the only thing that would make sense, the the thing that would make this story more believable is if that woman that was asking for Juan Dixon's credit card was actually Jen Shaw from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, because she's a master at getting people's credit cards and charging stuff to it that they really didn't want. Um, So anyway, I did a little... I did a little tweet about it, trying to get, you know, back into the tweet, Twitters. And um, so anyway, so I don't think anyone's going to be fired. The show is quite popular. They all have fidelity cheating stories about their marriages. They A lot of people have hid stuff from the cameras, hid stuff from, the, you know, it is not the Truman Show. It they It's not Big Brother. They can go meet their friend for a walk without mics and talk about what's going on in the show. They can pick up the phone and call Giselle and talk. They, if it doesn't, she's like, if you, nobody brought it on the, brought it up on the show until Karen did. And after that, I did address it on my podcast. But no, I wasn't going to divulge it on the show. And I think a lot of people, I mean, Shannon Bedore had a cheating scandal that happened. And maybe while it was happening, she wasn't talking about it. But then later on with the demise of the marriage, she was really, really honest. But I think a lot of people, you know, if the cameras aren't there right when it's happening, what what kind of 
what kind of weird Catholic confession situation are you obliged to do to Bravo? So I think it's a sticky situation, but I think there will be some changes in their contracts and whatnot going forward. And I hope they don't make an example out of her because I don't want to see anybody lose a job. But there you go. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have our girl, Sarah Colonna, back again. Hey, girl. Glowing skin, gorgeous hair. Oh, thank That's you. That's what everyone says. Thank you. Well, I, well, I appreciate that. I, I think you have nice studio lighting. Um, we, thank you. We had a fun uh, get together. And I was so happy because I had very little plans going into the weekend. And I reached out to Chris and I said, what are you doing this weekend? Are you around? He said, I am. And I go, I'm thinking maybe would maybe would you and Sarah want to maybe do happy hour or something. And he's like, yeah, let me know. Well, then Friday came and my girlfriend was like in town. And I'm like, all right, I'll just do. And so then when I got the text, which I'm sure you guys were invited first, to, to go to Chris's new house and then get dinner with you guys at Sony Luna, I was so excited. So I was excited too. But no, this is how it works now with Chris. Okay. I go around him and I text Liz. His wife. Yes. I yes. text his wife because Chris, is. Uh, I love the man. But he's the worst at like making plans. Like he he'll forget, or he doesn't get back to you, or he goes. I say I, he has a child, so I say, "What time is good for you?" Right, and he's like, "Well, whenever." And I go, "Okay, one." He goes, "Well, that's nap time," and I'm like, "Well, you you just said." <laughs> so it's easier to just go directly to to the woman in charge. Well, that's good. So we got to see uh, Chris's new house. <laughs> yes, which is great, and you know. I remembered that Chris was handy. He does come from um, a dad who is an electrician. Electrician. And so he ha he's handy. Then he has a brother who is a full-blown electrician, like career-wise. Yes. So Peter was just like blown away. He's like, you know how to do this? You can do all this? I So I hope we don't take advantage of Chris now that he lives close to our house. Well, <laughs> I know. Well, no, Liz told me. His wife told me because I said... I was like, oh, I look around. Every time I go to someone's new house, yes. especially when it's new, and I'm like, I see the fresh things that they've done and the things that they've hung up, I get very envious because I don't have, like, style at all. I don't have the gene either. Yeah. And I'm not a neat freak on top of it. No. And I, But I also, like, aren't – no, I mean, I But still... I would never know to, like, paint a ceiling blue because it bl used to be brown. I would just yeah. be like, guess we have a brown ceiling. Like, it wouldn't yeah. occur to me. So right. I got excited about some of the things. He painted it black, by the way. <laughs> Everyone's imagining Chris's house with the blue. No, it was he like painted a navy it with wood blue. beams. No, it isn't. It's black. It was like dark blue. Okay, well, whatever. It looks Cause, good. Because he said that Liz what, got mad at him and said something like, enjoy your blue roof or something, but then she really liked the color. Okay. Uh, I, anyway, it, it was like... The, the things hanging on the walls, all that stuff. I get envious of that because I don't know how to hang yes, I can't, things I don't, and like make them look good. So Liz said, if I, his wife said, if I wanted to give him a budget, send him to Home Goods, he'd change my life. I'm so excited <laughs> to do Chris Frangiola 2.0 Stager to the Stars. Oh yeah, I mean, why don't why that could be a reality show? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I love a Home Depot. I, you know, yeah. He does. He's he does. good. He's, He's got good. an eye. So we go to Sole Luna, which is this great Mexican restaurant right in Ventura, um, very close to the new house. And But you cannot make reservations. It's a Saturday night. We know it's going to be a rat fuck, okay? Right. But we go there. You put your name. And immediately Peter goes up. And I'm like, Peter, it does not matter how long it is. Everyone wants Sola Luna. You're going to take whatever they say. We're we're not now. Yeah, you're not going to get involved in changing our plans. Okay. Right. He's like, all right. So he goes and he puts the name down, and then he gives his number. And there was a moment in my heart that was like, I should give my number. And I I can't believe that I still question myself after 22 years because every time I think of something like that, and then you go, nah, always oh, wrong. So we go next door. So now the place has his phone number to let him know when the hour. And he was not happy ready. about the hour. I told him it's not going to be an hour. Just I, he goes, "What are we going to wait?" I said, "Heather just told you." I know we're waiting. Okay, so we go next door, <laughs> which is kind of sad because this is a decent restaurant too. But they're just getting the spillover from everybody that wants to go to Sole Luna, right? But we can have margaritas there. We can have a table, whatever. Get some app. We're fine. And then Peter goes, "Oh, our table ready." I go, "Great." So I start to get up. I'm like, I'll go over there because, you know, you can't fuck around with these things. And I'm like, and, you know, Peter and John are going to pay the bill or whatever. And and all of a sudden he goes, 
oh, wait, I guess they, it's canceled now. I go, what? And now, not only do we have the six of us, but we also have a three-year-old child that needs to eat, okay? Mm -hmm. So now I go running across the street like a coyote, okay? <laughs> and there's all these a people coyote. waiting. And I'm like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. So I just want to say to the person that's putting together your TikTok about what a fucking weirdo Heather McDowell was at Soleil Luna Saturday night, I agree, and this is the backstory. So I go right up to the woman, I go, Hi, we have a table for for six, even though we have a little three-year-old. It was still six. Right. Because I'm not an idiot. You don't make it for seven. Right. I'm like, we have a table for for six, uh, Peter. And she's like, yeah, he canceled. I go, no, no, no. That was a mistake. We were literally we were waiting next. He, she's like, I already gave your table away. I'm like, you cannot. I'm like, no, we've been waiting an hour. I don't, what do you mean that you talked to him? I'm like, you didn't talk to him. I was sitting. Nobody talked to him. She's like, we talked to him and he canceled it. I'm like, I, he never got on the phone. I'm like, please, anything. This lady comes over, indoor, outdoor. I'm like, I mean, I guess we kind of want indoor now. It's cold, but I'm like, we'll take whatever. Okay, da, da, 10 minutes. And she's like, where are you going to be? I'm like, I'm going to stand right here. Like, fajitas are coming right by me. I'm like, I am not leaving my spot. So he comes over and I'm like, Peter. I want to see your phone right now. Okay, so I'm going to show you the phone. So you see the text from the place. Sola Luna will notify you when the table is ready. This is at 6.13. Hold for 5 p.m. Reply 3 to cancel. Okay, and hold for 5 p.m. Uh, five minutes. Hold for five minutes and then reply 3 to cancel. Okay. Oh, no. So at 6.59, <laughs> and Sarah was right. It was not an hour. Mm -mm. It mm -mm. was 45 minutes. 45 Sarah minutes. was right. Sola Luna, your table is ready. Host... Uh, see host within five minutes to be seated, which we easily can do, or lose your place in line. Full party required, which we can do. Reply three to cancel. At 7.08, he writes, we hear three. Three. Three to cancel. Soleil Luna, you have been removed from the wait list. <laughs> and then he writes at 7.09, we're here. <laughs> okay. That's when I go running. So this is the thing. I've said to Peter before, he has a problem with reading comprehension. I don't think he, he – what happened in a really bad situation, you may recall the story. We were going we – we flew to Canada, and we were taking a ship with his mother-in-law and all the relatives to go, like, around Alaska and stuff from Canada. We had one beer, one Canadian beer, but I guess they can get you buzzed. And then we go through the thing to get on the – to go into the boat, you know, and you have to answer this question out. This would be pre-COVID, but still you're going on a cruise. Right. And it says, you know, check yes if you have diarrhea, whatever. So he's like, <laughs> and they're like, uh, he has to be quarantined. <laughs> and we're like, what? And at this time, Brandon's younger. So he's like, we can't go on the trip. I'm like, no, we're leaving him. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, oh, I didn't read it right. They're like, too late now. Now you've said, legally, you've said you have diarrhea. <laughs> so now you have to go to a quarantine spot and we need to question everyone in the family and we need to take everyone's temperature because you said you have diarrhea and he's trying to like wah, wah. I'm like you're not going to sue Canada we have to go over here yeah we because have to go you to the bad didn't line. read it right so I'm just telling you guys forget about when you find the person you want to marry have a reading comprehension test and just don't let him be in charge of reservations. I will never, ever. Well, now we know. He well, can never be the one that puts his number down, ever. I have to tell you, John was very concerned, okay, because John really, he loves that place too. He didn't want to, he wanted to have that table. He had yes. been looking forward to Soli Luna all day. And me too. So now he's sitting next to Peter. And he's like, why is it all he's, he's telling me this yesterday. I was crying, laughing. We were just, we were just having brunch. And he's like, Sarah I was so panicked because he didn't have his phone out. Right. And John was like, Hey man, uh, maybe you should get your phone out. Cause they're going to text us about the table or whatever. And he's like, oh, okay. And then he kind of, I think he put it face down at first. He turned it face down. And he's yeah. like, Hey, it's only been 30 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, Sarah says it doesn't always take an hour. John like, was like, prop the phone up and let me see it basically. And then, <laughs> so then. And then he was like, then he realized that Peter had missed the text and he was like, and when he, when I saw that he had canceled, he's like, I just had a feeling he was going to fuck it up. God. I was just like, it was so, it was so funny. When he, when Peter, the look on Peter's face when he realized he had three was pretty priceless. Oh, 
Three to so, cancel. So there we go. We had fun. We, they, All we, a good time. Yeah, you pulled it off. You went over yeah. there and spoke. You made it happen. My star-studded weekend got better. Oh. Besides being with Sarah and Chris <laughs> and John Ryan. Um, I got invited to my friend's. Um, at the Coliseum, she's in the founder's, you know, box, which is like this incredible thing they built about three years ago. And it's so nice, you know, just like if you'd go to the crypto center or whatever, but right. it's really nice. for this NASCAR thing, which I was like, that's not a very long, little, that seems like a very small area to make yeah. the Coliseum. And it was, and running a little matchbox thing, whatever. I'd never gone to NASCAR. Okay. I like that there's free food and drinks and we're with the, I, the creme I'm de la creme of LA. Yeah. Next door, Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani. You can zoom in. There's her ponytail. Oh, yes. that is her ponytail. <laughs> oh. With the kids and Blake and a couple other cute LA friends enjoying it. And they, I was that's whole, a big I, sighting. Oh, I was like, I, I didn't want to like overly film it. I was acting like I, you know, like I was like, mm, but getting her. And, um, well, you met Blake great. at, Chelsea Lately. So Peter pulled up the last day of Chelsea Lately, and he had a photo with myself and Gwen Stefani and him. But, oh, what? I forgot she was there, but too. But I did not, like, jump over the thing and be like, <laughs> hey. Mar- remember us <laughs> from eight, eight years ago? <laughs> that would, I mean, what, but what were they good doing? Parents. Were oh, they, they were great. Lovey-dovey? They were just like a family. He, you know, they had the three boys, so, and, and I think they had some other friends there. Some other kids. He was super attentive to the kids. He took off his hat when they sang the um, national anthem. Yeah. Um, they're just cute. She looked great, fun. They played her song, all the bum, da 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 na 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 da da. And then we all ran out and was like, they liked her song. Like, it what was, was she doing when they do that? She was dancing around. Yeah. She was liking it. And then I, Cypress Hill and Wiz Khalifa played. So that was really fun since I wasn't at the Grammys. I had my own Grammys NASCAR. I mean, you did. That's You had yeah. huge celebrities right exactly. there that are musicians. I've always wondered what it would be like to have like your song come on. Like, I don't know. They, I'm sure they knew she was there, but I'm just like, not necessarily did they plan it. They were just going right. to play the song. Because I was, I've never been more upset than at my wedding. Carrie Underwood was basically at my wedding. She was at the same resort, and she was watching oh. our reception. How did you find that out? Because she, I saw her. She was there. She you was mean you saw at, her earlier in the weekend, or you that night? No, we saw her up in the restaurant, and then um, my and then John's agent was there. Okay, and he also happens to know her husband because he's Canadian hockey player. Okay, I think I might be making that up. Something like that. Anyway. So I was like, why don't I have a Carrie Underwood song on this playlist? Why didn't you, couldn't you have adjusted it? Yeah, he's a Canadian. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. I, I, I don't, I guess I could have. I didn't think about it in the moment. It was all on like a phone or something. But yeah. I really thought, I was like, God, I wish I had a Carrie Underwood song because then I could yeah. be like, hey, girl. Yes. And maybe she'd come down. Maybe she'd come down. No. Have an app. Probably not. <laughs> oh, heartbreaking. Oh, the other thing I did this weekend was I went to one of those um, Asian spas that scrub your body down oh. to the bone. Have you done it? I've done it once. I didn't like it's it. It's not for the faint of heart. No. Uh, you got to be willing to be buck naked and see a lot of different bodies. Yeah. And then you go into your own private room and they throw you on like a plastic bed, almost like a it's corner. Like, a, like if you were like... If yeah, you it's were, like a rubber. Yeah, rubber. like it's literally like a corner. Did you go office. to like Olympic? The one? No, on no, the, I went yeah. to this one in um, Chatsworth. Okay. And I thought it was great. And, and your skin it, does look very shiny. I mean, I mean, they got off like twenty-two years of dead skin. I mean, they flip you around everything. I mean, it's a little, and it's not as not that soft. So if you can't like handle like a little bit, of, but then I open my eyes just as they're about to take the bucket to throw the warm water and see all the dead brown skin and I'm like like if I could have brought my phone in and just filmed the dead skin going down the drain I probably would I would probably go to bed to that every night I would okay what would what would you rather go to sleep to that or the sound of back cracking it's a hard choice yeah I I don't know that there's videos of dead skin removal like there is back I'm sure cracking there is. um but I say start start if you have one of these spas and you want people to go film 
someone's dead skin coming off their back and people will be lined up. I went to one. Yeah. I didn't like it. I was, I felt very. Uh, violated? No. I mean, I liked that aspect of it. And being I didn't violated. mind. Yeah. I liked the being violated part. <laughs> No, I liked the aspect of the skin coming off. I liked. I didn't mind that everyone was walking around like right. Like they actually are like you can't wear clothes. Right. Like it's they, like it's yeah. A, it's a bacterial thing. Yeah. They don't want you to. Yeah. But when they threw me on that on that rubber mat and I, I just and flipped you around like you're about to fall off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it just felt like I was just being like slapped around like a fish on no, a, on it, a pool deck or something. You do <laughs> feel you feel like. The people in Seattle that take the fishes and throw them at each other. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was. And then I, and I had also mistakenly uh, asked for a massage and they just do it at the, in the same place. So yeah. there's no, like, there's nowhere to put like your face. You don't so really, you don't, like you know what I would say? I don't know if that, that might be part of the package, but if you don't need to do that, I would just do the scrub and then be on your way. Okay. Cause I agree. I felt really like I was going to leave there in like a neck brace or something. I felt like I was being really tossed around. Yeah. But, they, you know, they're just, they're, it's all business. I mean, I'm touching my arm job. right now and it is like now night I and do day. It. Okay. I think it's a cool thing to do once a month. Okay. Yeah. Let's get into the Grammys. Um, Beyonce now won for having the most Grammys ever. Um, I didn't love this dress that she wore. I think there's like too many things going on. Um, it's like a silver bottom with a slit and then like a gold bodice and then black gloves. But I guess maybe she wanted to look like the Grammy. Maybe that's what, what it was. Oh, I, w I would. I kind of would like it. I think I would like it if it was all gold. Yeah. Yeah. But this was, wasn't Lizzo in a similar She had just dress? the same silver and so did Machine Gun Kelly. So, and I was just at Neiman's and I saw a blazer and a suit in that same tinfoil baked potato look. Oh, so that's a thing? That's in right now. The baked potato look? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want it to be in. I She's so beautiful. I feel like I would have really liked that dress if it was all gold. But like, but yeah, you're right. Maybe she's, it's um, a homage to Okay, the... so Lizzo won and she's, you know, everyone loves her and she looked great. And I have a prediction. Okay. I don't think people have really caught on yet, but I've been noticing. Okay. I think she's on a weight loss journey. Oh, really? I think she has lost weight. I do think she's lost weight. And but... I think in three months, she's going to look significantly different. And I just hope that her fans, all of her fans, support her no matter what. Because I could see people turning on her the way they did Adele. If, in fact, she chooses to continue with changing her I feel like herself. she's, oh, I feel like she's just like a big person you know what i mean like i'm not saying she's it, gonna be a size zero but right. i think she's gonna slim be less curvy right but just as body positive and i just wonder how the world will react because i think it's right. like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't well you're right about that yeah for sure yeah um i saw her perform and i mean i was like the i mean there's no she's not uh, like She's not out of shape. I no, mean, she, I know. She, she's amazing. It, amazing, yeah. And like she's and does it all while she plays the flute. And um, but yeah, that's interesting. I I did notice last night I thought she looked um like smaller. Yeah. Yeah. She's gorgeous, funny. She looked beautiful. It's so positive and so grateful. I know I like to her win. Speech. I love every song she does. Ugh, me too. Black China looked real fucking weird. I what? don't know what was happening here. <laughs> she went black swan. But you know what? I was looking at all the page six, you know, photos. And she did have the most comments. So it's like, hey, if you're going to go to this thing and you're not being nominated for a Grammy but you invite, got invited, make it worth your while. Dress like a freak. Yeah. And at least have us talk about you. Because <laughs> she looks like a like a – like a like a horror Humpty Dumpty. It was like, like a, a black like a, swan. You know what I mean, like like a like all I can think of is Humpty Dumpty for some reason because of like the top. I don't yeah. mean I don't mean her shape. I'm talking about like the shape of the costume. Like a uh, like I don't know what like top heavy. Like she's gonna fall. Off. Like it looks so uncomfortable. Yeah. So she's <laughs> was black swan. Um, is okay. that what it was? Everyone's talking about. You know, everyone's the paparazzi's favorite thing to do is just find Ben. Affleck miserable. looking miserable in J-Lo's presence, okay? <laughs> so she looked gorgeous. They're together. And here's a photo. Um, I mean, really, the LA Times. Did anyone check on miserable Ben Affleck after the Grammy Awards? 
I mean, he doesn't like, even look miserable there, but he did in other. There was. Did you see the clip the of him? Like, yeah, I have the. Ex- I have. This is kind of dark, but I have the video exchange that also page six, where he's where she's like. People are are trying to wonder what she said, but it's kind of like she's kind of like stop it, you know, or like, or like you know what, put a fucking smile on, like right, uh, sorry, something like that. sorry that I dragged you to the Grammys where I'm presenting, like yeah, what the, who did you think you were marrying? And you got like a front row table, like I mean, and there's a charcuterie board in front of you, so like have a piece of cheese. Oh, can you? Maybe she should start inviting you. I mean, you know how <laughs> happy you would be. I would have been thrilled. Okay, so. But then I saw this photo also on page six where he is laughing with, who is that, Adrian Brody? Yeah. He is laughing. Well, he found another actor to talk yes. to, so he's excited. Maybe that's, <laughs> okay, that's a really good point because people yeah. are like, listen, you know, the comments were great. They're like, this is why you don't get back together with your ex. They're an ex for a reason, which I remember that from your book. Yeah. You called that's... it recycling. Yes. And you thought you were doing well for the, you thought you were doing something for the environment at the time. <laughs> right. And you you're were not. trying to justify just your, recycle a man. your bad mistake. Yep. And so you were like, you know, let's just recycle. But it's true. So she recycled someone and, you know, but then other people were like, you know what, guys, this is marriage. You, you have some bickering nights. You have something where like, I'm tired or whatever, or she thinks he's being one way. And then immediately when she like said that, then the camera came and she, she was smiling and like that's a lot to like manage knowing that all anyone does is try to get photos of him smoking or looking sullen or whatever. Yeah, that's just kind of his – what if she looked at his phone and it said he had hit three to cancel and that's what they were arguing about? <laughs> that uh, is so amazing. What if they had a reservation to go somewhere? And he – I'm just th- I'm just saying they were probably going somewhere afterwards. I mean, because that they were going to board didn't look that good. No, they needed a dinner afterwards, and she's like, "You, you." Had I'm, I'm guessing they wanted some really killer Mexican. Yeah, at Sole Luna. I mean, wait, did you see the other video that was going around? It didn't make any sense to me. Everyone was saying that he said, Jen, I didn't have a drink. Jen. Oh, yes. That was at the premiere of Shotgun. Well, so someone like at the party yeah. kind of like filmed them from afar having an exchange. And they. And but the guy did his own voice, his own voiceover. And yeah. like, and I think, and people were like, that's not him talking. Like, that's <laughs> you making up what you think he said. It was, it was a bizarre clip. I mean, I think, listen, I think. When you're a spouse to somebody like this, in your case, you're married to an NFL player. So I'm guessing he doesn't have to tell you when he was playing and going to the Super Bowl, hey, there's going to probably be some events and it's going to be a little bit busy this time of year. Hope you don't mind yeah. being my plus one at the fucking Super Bowl. Yeah. But the same thing goes, Ben. Like, I've got a shotgun wedding premiere coming and then I'm going to the Grammys. Hope you can be a delight for fucking two and a half hours. Yeah. Otherwise like, why do just... I have to tell you that? Or stay home if you don't want to go. Well, you can't. She, he cannot stay home. If she takes her sister or her mother, then everyone's going right. to. That's going to look uh, w- way worse. But so, you're right. Just, I mean, it can't be that. You have to suck it up. But yeah. I think it's what you were saying about Adrian Bodie. I think he hasn't had like a real film project in a while. That he can like be excited about, and I think sometimes for people both in the limelight, they they do get jealous or they do get yeah. annoyed sometimes that, you know, it's been to her, you know, it's, ugh, you know, whatever. And also the guy's like fifty, and when you get older, big nights like this are not as fun, no matter how famous you are. They are exhausting. Right. It is exhausting. It's work. And, yeah. You know, you did the red carpet. You're sitting. You're smiling. You're being on. You know. But you know, you're on, like you kind of know that you. Like you said, they yes. know people are always trying to get photos. So just right. put on a smile for a couple hours. I have a question to ask you about yes. this. I saw a lot of comments on the one on the clip where people thought that she's he said the um, drink thing. The drink thing. I only had one drink. Yeah. Or yeah, I didn't have a drink or something because yeah. he's sober. And then she took, and then they were she like, she sip, either yeah. sipped it or she, and who knows. But I saw a lot of comments saying how disrespectful it was if she drank in front of him since he's sober. I totally disagree. And I, I think, disagree with and that. And I think any couple in which one person is sober would say I disagree too. Yeah. Because I mean, I don't think she even drinks really. She uh, like, barely drinks. Yeah. I mean, I think she has like a glass of champagne here or there. So I don't think that was ever their deal. 
No. You know, and and I think, like I said, I think most people that, you know, are in a couple of sobriety, they, so many people I know, like Lala Kent, whatever, she's been sober for four years. She's never has a problem if her friends are drink, drinking. Right. And, and, like, encourages it. Like, get a drink, have fun. It's, yeah. like, even more fun for me. You're more fun when you're drunk. Like, let me sit around and be around you. Yeah. Like, so I don't really know. I don't think I disagree. No, I disagree with that. Yeah, because, like, I, I mean, it's not a husband, but I have a good friend who quit drinking. Yeah. And every time we go out, all the girls still get wine. She, nothing yeah. Nothing even, it doesn't. Right. That's, like, that's, that, that's that person's journey. It's not like right. disrespectful to drink in front of them. Yeah. I mean, it would be disrespectful to be like, ooh, this is delicious. Don't you wish you could have some? I mean, yeah. that would be weird. <laughs> right, but, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think she's doing that. So Sam Smith and Kim Petras, who both won a Grammy for Unholy. So a lot of people are saying that um, it was deemed satanic. And it was satanic. But at the same time, the song is called Unholy. Right. If they would have done something really uh, reverent, that would also have been, been like, wait, that's inappropriate. Like, why are you doing like like a prayer Madonna look? Like, so it is what it is. But that that was the song is called Unholy. Yeah, I think it's just. I mean, I they, I think at this point when people do something like they're wearing red or the I didn't really see the whole thing, but I know yeah. they were like wearing like there was like masks or horn, right? Yeah. Something. It's like. They're just trying to get people talking. It's like, yeah, I don't think they're... But I, I kind of think, think it went with the theme. Yeah. I mean, if the song was called, like, you know, Sheeps and Butterflies, and then we <laughs> dance to this. But I was thinking, you know who also did this with Little Nas? He had a very, like, devil, satanic right. routine as well. Yeah. So, like, hey, it's it's a thing. It's got everyone talking, So, <laughs> um, okay. Um, did you hear about this Jessica Simpson thing? That is going around. No. Okay, so Jessica Simpson um, did this podcast thing that I'm just listening to that's called True and Short Stories, right? And she read her own story and talked about how... Oh, I I talked about how she, um, you know, was something like the name of the story was like, they all, all big stars say they're single or whatever. And so she tells the story of how she's got... um, you know, a Motorola phone, this is the year, and she's dating a Backstreet Boy or whatever, and she has this, like, you know, kind of this hookup relationship with this movie star. So, by the way, I listened to it. It's very weird, her voice. Oh, really? Like, she's reading, like, a really, like, like I don't know if she wrote it or somebody helped her write it, but it was, like, very descriptive, like, I feel the buzz... <laughs> Of the Rota Mo- like Motorola phone, like it's really weird. And then she's like laughing, like she's always like, like it's almost like she's like about to take a shit. <laughs> it sounds so weird. Oh, now I have to listen to it. It sounds so weird, and she's talking and like she's like holding back laughter of this story. Anyway, so the sleuths did their work about you know what year it was, what he right. was wearing, I do who remember was at her, the her, event, yeah. you know, and how hot he was. And they're like, well, Will Ferrell was there. We know it wasn't Will Ferrell. Okay. No. <laughs> so the world, and according to Yahoo, Yahoo thinks it might have been Marky Mark. And at that time, he was, I don't know if he was married yet, but with the woman he still is today, they've been married forever. They have four kids. So there might have been some that, you know, he, he she was pregnant. So he, if it was in fact him, which we don't know. Right. But that's um, what everyone that, thinks. You know, then, then her story makes sense and that he wasn't single, you know? Right. Um, there was someone else people were guessing too, and now I can't remember who it was. There was like one other person that they deduced. I think they yeah. mostly it was him, but there was like one other person that they were like was there that was a big movie star, and now I can't remember who it right. was. Right. Oh well. But it really got people, you know, talking, and I was like, "Where is the story?" So, um, well, anyway, I thought that you, was kind of interesting. Do yeah. you think something like that, like now his wife, does he? Because that's the rumor. Is are they fighting? <laughs> I really hope not. I'm assuming she may have known back then before he turned like really Catholic and did a movie about a priest. Like he's very Catholic. Yeah. And he said he had a spiritual advisor, which I do think is a weird, that is not really what you call. Most people would just be like, I talked to my priest. But she said, he's like, I talked to my spiritual advisor about you and I, you know, or something like I'm really trying to be on the up and up. But I would hope that his wife, if she gets wind of this, doesn't pay in any mind. It's been 20 it's years. 20 years. Four oh, kids like, later. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever yeah. the case. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
But I, I think it's also great that she told the story. It's juicy. It's her story to tell. She didn't say who it was. And if people want to cons- assume it's Speculate. him, then, yeah. yeah. I, now I have to listen to that podcast, though, just to um, listen to her giggle. <laughs> this is pretty juicy. Meghan Markle, um, according to Cosmopolitan, no, Meghan Markle wasn't snubbed from Oprah's birthday party. But she wasn't there. She wasn't. I don't think she was invited. There's speculation to say she had. So she had a party for her 69th birthday. I want to say, Megan, hold out for the 70th. <laughs> it's only a 69. It's not the big year, you no. know. Um, but you know, uh, Kris Jenner, Kim Kardashian. Who else was there? Get a list. Uh, like it was all. Priyanka uh, Chopra. Who Priyanka? Uh, you know all these like people and. They live in the same neighborhood, you know. So, like, I'm sure she saw the cars getting parked. As she right. walked her chickens and was like, why am I not invited? To... <laughs> uh, of course, she, kind of rude, she invited her to her wedding. Oprah right. went to the wedding. Oprah, of course, did the interview. So the question is, and but it was, tw- but it was also to celebrate 25 most influential women. So then this other article was like, well, it was mostly entertainers. It really, where does she really fall? Because she's not really a princess, but she's not really an actress anymore. She's not, I'm like, she just wasn't invited. You just, and then she they're live like, oh, like on their block too? Yeah. It, yeah. I just, she just wasn't invited. You don't get invited to everything. Right. You know? And she did, probably didn't want her there because they're kind of in some shit right now. This stuff is controversial. And there's stuff that she said on that interview that people don't believe she was being completely truthful with Oprah. So Oprah was probably like, I'll invite you to the 70th, girl. Like, just, I'm just, yeah, we haven't a bit, talked. A bigger bash yeah, that you had, can come to because everyone, and also she's probably like, I don't want everyone talking about you all night. It's my party. Right, exactly. Because I always remember when Oprah, I think, had her 50th birthday. And this is such a great idea for a birthday for big egomaniacs that want to, that have some money and want to spend like a nice party. My friend Lainey did it. Um, you tell everybody, you wear black. Okay. Okay. It's a party. And you show up in red. That's what Oprah did. She told everyone else to wear black. Yeah. Oh. It's black tie and wear black. And then I'm coming in red. And then she shows up in red. So that she stands out. It's just great. It's your party. Do it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Give everyone a dress code. Yeah. I would have been like, it's. A, I want to do that with people and be like, it's a costume party and make everyone dress stupid. And then I just come in normal. You're like, <laughs> I'm like, why are you guys dressed like why that? Are you like, why are you like medieval times? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do for my 50th. Um, anyway, my opinion is she just wasn't invited. If she was, there was no way in hell she would miss it. They were invited to Ellen and Portia's, which was actually Portia's birthday, but it was a surprise renewal in which Kris Jenner renewed the vows for them. She and and Ellen was surprised that Portia wore her dress out. Wait, are Chris Jenner and Ellen close? Oh yeah. Oh really? Oh yeah. They've How been did hanging I not out. Know well, that? I started about three years ago when the Kardashian Jenners were on her show. Every third guest was a Kardashian Jenner, yeah. uh, and literally was that often. And then they all bought mansions in the Madison Club in La Quinta, and they hang out and drink. And then Corey, Chris Jenner's. Um, long-term boyfriend, he fancies himself an art curator. And so he hangs out with Portia and Ellen and advises them on what kind of art to buy. What a fun club. (laughs) What a fun club to be a part of. But they did invite her to that, and she did go to that. And they also, I don't know, I think that might have also been in Santa Barbara. I'm not sure where the vow renewal was. I think it's Santa Barbara. I think they bought a new house there. But the thing is, it says they that she wasn't snubbed, but they don't say how they – like, where does it say – you know what I mean? There's nothing here that says that she – There's nothing that says that she can show us an email, that right. she was on a paperless post, and that she respectfully declined. I think Oprah uses Bec- Evite. Oh, okay, Evite. <laughs> um, there's no Evite. There's no – accidental post of like her with a kid and and she just put the invitation like in the corner like on Instagram to be like uh I was invited um little little bet had the sniffles right and I'm an excellent mother so I didn't go to Oprah's right yeah hmm. well, also there was another big party that happened you know Anastasia the famous Anastasia eyebrow lady yes she had some big party that Chris Jenner and Chrissy Teigen and Cindy Crawford and Kim Kardashian and, and Paris Hilton, all 
but it was still only like, and Oprah was there, and Gail, but it was still only like maybe 30, 40 women. I didn't see her at that either. Now, maybe she doesn't get her brows done by Anastasia. Maybe you, one time she had a free offer and she passed. Yeah. B big regrets. Can you imagine the the pressure of going to that woman's party of like how good your brows need to look when you go? I would be so stressed because I have kind of like, my eyebrows aren't great. You know, I get them when they, right after I get them done, they look good for like a couple of days and that's it. It's like one's yeah. kind of wonky. I, I can't imagine the pressure of going to a famous brow lady's house for her birthday. Yeah. I just, it's a wear, lot. I would wear like a beanie with my eyebrows covered. Oh. <laughs> as a look <laughs> um speaking of okay so this was kind of a funny weird story so prince harry in his book talks about how he lost his virginity to an older woman and he it was out like behind a pub near a stable or whatever and he the, the words he uses i think are kind of gross he's like i mounted her it was quick and everything mounted. like oh, well i thought that was rude because she did really work like with horses she was like a stable girl and did he say that in the... He says mounted. And I kind of think it's... But... I mean, listen, I have to say, people are mad at me. I did not read the book. I am reporting on it on all the little clips and audio things that I read elsewhere. Yeah. However, I an entire chapter is about his penis, it being frozen, it being uncircumcised, and losing his... His, you know, virginity. Fra and I frost do frostbitten, frostbitten, right? Yeah. John's actually listening to the book. Oh, I thought you said John's dick <laughs> no, was actually John, frosted. John Because he's from Canada. And I do think... It must be, it's cold there. And and when you're after you're forced to play outside in the snow. Oh, yeah. For football. I right. would imagine your little thing would get cold. I'll ask him. Um, And so he's listening because he looks so much like Harry. Yeah. Or Harry looks like him. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so this is what's weird, okay? Rupert... Everett, the actor, then all of a sudden gets involved in the story. And he starts to say, it's not true what he wrote in the book. I mean, this is like, why are you getting involved? Um, it's so strange. He says, I know the woman he lost his virginity to is, and it wasn't behind a pub, and it wasn't in, this in the country of the UK, he claims to the Telegraph. Um I, and then this is what, but this is what Harry says in the book. I mounted her quickly, after which she spanked my ass and sent me away. One of my many mistakes was letting it happen in a field just behind a very busy pub. No doubt someone had seen us, he added. But I guess Rupert <laughs> hadn't, okay? Because Rupert's like, I didn't see you mount this woman, so I'm just going to call bullshit on the story. Anyway, the woman came out and she said, no, what Harry said is true. We did bone behind the thing. I was 19. He was almost 17. And I did slap him on the ass. But maybe it wasn't his first, is according to Rupert Everett. Rupert Everett wants everyone to know it wasn't his first. Is that oh. is that what he's saying? I think oh, he's is saying. Is Rupert saying he was his first? I don't, I don't know. know what he's saying. He's saying it's just, very strange. He's saying, I know the woman he lost. Oh, no, the woman he lost his virginity to. And it wasn't behind a pub. It wasn't in this country. Yeah. First of all. Can you imagine just for no reason Rupert Everett just getting involved in your business? Just inserting yourself. <laughs> like, okay. Like, that's a thirst trap. Like, are you kidding me? That's Speaking funny. of thirst traps, this happened on TMZ today. And it was Tom Brady taking a thirst trap photo. He's just in his underwear. He's taking a picture of himself in his big mirror. He did cover his, his dick. So it's like not full bulge. But it's thirsty. Anyway, I saw this and I thought, is no one above the thirst trap? Really, Tom Brady? I know. Really? And then I thought, is anybody? So then I wrote, if Michelle and Barack start doing thirst trap bikini photos after two months of Ozempic to promote their new podcast, then we know we are done. <laughs> <laughs> That's no one's because above I it. Because I just would no one's above it. No. I honestly think if Barack and Michelle start feeling themselves and they're on a vacation and they have something to promote. Everyone loves their love. She said she hated him for 10 years. So, you know, she wants to know everyone. We're not, we don't hate each other. Don't you want to be this in the, the third, fourth chapter of your life when your girls are grown? If they do one and they're like, I mean. We're done. And then they're just like, join, our, subscribe, <laughs> subscribe to our Patreon. I We're going to tell you all the juicy scoop about our trip to Cabo. Now, I think. I don't think I'd follow him. Maybe I follow him on my Clutch Women Instagram, but I yes. I feel like I've never seen him post anything like this before. I right? haven't either. It's usually no. like either Granted, football he, or him and the kids. I mean, he's single. Yeah. 
How do you, so, I mean, he now he did quit again. Yes, he did. And it sounds like this is the end. I think so. And being a football wife, we talked about this last time, um, people are like, God, you're such an idiot. You could have saved your marriage. No one knows what's going on in a marriage. She might have been done or yeah. not. I don't think it helped that he kind of went back on his word. But too no. late now. I mean. Started OnlyFans, Tom you... Brady. <laughs> Yeah, it is fun. It is. You're so right, though. Nobody's above it because, like, yeah. you're Tom Brady. <laughs> like, I, I mean, the same way I would feel about Madonna. Like, like, really? Like, you have to do this. You have to go and do this. Stuff. Exactly. Everyone does it. No one. Oh, like, Tom. you just you should be above it. Have you heard about the loofahs? No. Okay. Well, you know that pineapples were the sign, the patron saint of swinging. Swinging. That mm -hmm. was the sign. I've talked about it for years. And. Do I have to remind you what you gave me as a housewarming gift? Yes, I gave you cute pineapple cocktail drinks mm -hmm. for the outside pool. Um, and I think I did know that what swinging meant when I got those for you. I think I do, did know about the pineapples and I still got them for you. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just saying, if you, were trying, if you were trying to get somewhere, I don't know. I mean, John's <laughs> muscles looked pretty good in that tight, long sleeve shirt. That's true. And he, and he knows how not to fuck up. <laughs> A reservation. <laughs> a reservation when you're waiting an hour from some, for some tacos. Um, okay, there is a place called The Villages. It's Florida's friendliest hometown. And it is, as you know, you know, the there is a huge swinging community in Florida, but also among our like like younger seniors. Okay. You know, like they're so the new thing is loofahs. And I've seen this everywhere. You put a loofah like on your antenna on your car when you're shopping. Okay. To let people know that you're a swinger. But unlike the pineapple, the loofahs are much more specific You do, by based on their color. Oh. So white is the novices and beginners. Mm hmm So you're just curious. You don't know. Okay. Purple is voyeur, voyeur. Am I saying that right? And people who like to watch. So you're like, just invite me to your party. I don't know if I'll participate. I'll bring a seven-layer bean dip. I might just want to sit in the corner. <laughs> and just watch you bone. And just watch you bone. Yeah. Don't While touch I eat my me. deep bean dip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't. Yeah. Pink. It's a soft swap. People who like to do it with others in the room. So now I might want to just be with my husband, but we can be in a room with other people. Oh. We could swap a little, but... We're not sure, but we. I might want to screw my husband at the party, but not anyone else. Soft swap people who like to do it with other. Yeah, so like okay. you. And, so that's yes. like if you and Peter, when you brought the pineapples over to my house, but you were like, we just want you guys to watch us bone, or we all bone, but I don't touch <laughs> your, you or your husband, and you don't touch us, but we might bone. Oh, sounds like so okay. much work. Okay. okay, blue is lowest level of full swap. Those who can play well with others. So I guess you could just be a little involved, maybe go to like third base. I don't really know. That's I like even, that's like a gray when, area, even though it's blue. That's, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's like when it's like if I if John and I are boning and you and Peter are boning and then like I reach over and grab your boob or something. Yes. That's what it is. Okay. Yes. Or maybe we just <laughs> kiss or something. Yellow. Mid-level swap. <laughs> Yellow, mid-level swap for those who want to have fun but are still nervous. <laughs> okay. So I, it's, I need to be eased into it. I'm not an expert. Okay. So it's like saying basically go easy on us. Go Don't, easy yeah, on us. Help make us comfortable. Don't bring any toys. Don't, you know, whatever. No strap-ons, no S&M. Just, just let me just feel it. Black is full swap. Those who say what the hell, let it all go down. Okay. So they will screw other people. They will let their partner screw other people. All of it. Um, teal, which, okay, I would think it would be hard to find a teal loofah. But teal, bisexual for those that want to increase their dating chances. So they're going to swap with same sex, mix, whatever. Right. Like their husband might want to be with John. If you ask a teal person over, <laughs> that's it. Now... So this is it, so it's on your car. Yeah, they say you put it on your car. You put it and on I've your seen friends. lots of TikToks of people um, and 
different postings of people taking photos of the loofahs on people's cars. It's a real thing. Yeah, and it's in Florida? Well, I don't know. Everywhere. I'm assuming it's... De- well, it's definitely at the Villages um, in Florida, but... I'm assuming other places. I too. recently bought like a big box of loofahs on Amazon, and I just feel like I'm. They they're probably like, oh, you know. Well, it's I'm like proud to say different. I don't use a loofah. I go to that Asian spa. That's right, and they scrub the <laughs> shit out of me. So I you'll don't never even need own, one again. I don't own a loofah. So if you see me buying a loofah, you know Peter and I are going down a different path. Now, which color are you getting? A hundred percent white or purple. Right. Yeah. Just because I just want to report on it for the Patreon people. <laughs> now, do you th- do they like do they have you know how they like key parties? Remember? They, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, do you think they do with loofahs? Key parties now? are where they back in the day of like seventies, people would put their keys in, and then the, uh, uh, allegedly this is how they did it. Well, see, a lot of those people that did those key parties are like seventy five now, and they're at the senior place with these people. So why would they stop? Right. They would so, just keep doing yeah, the same So, yeah, then thing. you would take and then you're like, I got this key. Okay, you and I go together. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if they do it with loofahs and then you're like, if you grab a yellow one, that means you're, you know, you're as long doing as they're not level. U- as long as they're not used loofahs because I guess the, the goal of a loofah is that it doesn't keep bacteria like a sponge, but I still think it would. Yeah. That's – Like don't use your loof – don't use your swinging detecting – loofahs for actually getting rid of dead skin. Like you think they you think they take it with them to the car, put on the antenna for the day, and then yeah. when they go take a shower, yeah. they take it back in. Yeah. Like I'm like, Peter, did you get the list for Ralph's? <laughs> okay, and then I have to run back in the in the house and be like, just forgot something in the shower. And you have to grab your, your soggy loofah. I this is a good time to be in the loofah industry. Yeah. It's kind of like, remember when I kind of felt like loofahs went away. Juice? What'd you say? Like everyone was drinking celery juice yes. and you couldn't find celery anywhere. Yeah. This is going to what happens. With, you're going to have to stock so up on So are, are people over the celery juice now? That was a big thing like three years ago. Yeah. I feel like people are still doing it. It was that medical medium oh. book that okay. everyone started doing. But I, but I see celery now at the store. So I think- it's bad. People have backed off for a while. You little you the couldn't only, find any. The only way I like celery is with a shit ton of peanut butter on it. Yeah, I did it. I I drank it a couple times. And I, Every time I buy celery, I do one peanut butter stalk, and then I never go back. And, the and then like a month bad. later, I throw it away. Yeah, that's. Kind I always of... I'm like, this is gonna be my new thing. I'm gonna. This tastes delicious. Why don't I eat more of this? It is delicious. Um, Euphoria star Chloe Cherry got caught for stealing. She was buying a bunch of stuff. And she didn't pay for a $28 blouse that was, like, in her arms. First, I thought, was it was she wearing it? Like, did she put it on? And so she admitted, yeah, I didn't buy it. But kind of weird. Like, on purpose? Or she just I kinda, forgot? I mean, I would, would say there would be a good argument for forgetting. But it's, I guess there's some evidence that she really was trying to not pay for this $28 blouse, which just tells me, obviously, she can afford it. So there's there's some weird, like, high that you're getting out like of that Like a rush or something. out of it. Yeah. yeah. Like, remember, remember Winona, Winona Ryder? Ryder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say something right here that I'm not proud of. Okay. I was at Target, I want to say, like, seven years ago. I've had a lot of guilt about this. Okay. And I Let think it all out, girl. I, I think I tried on a hat, and I bought everything. And not until I got in the car and then felt the hat, like as I was getting it, did I realize I didn't buy the hat, nobody noticed, and I could have easily walked back in there. I wasn't on the freeway. Yeah. I just drove away. (laughs) They're coming for you now, girl. I mean, that's an honest mistake, Or sometimes, I think a lot of times kids have grabbed stuff when they're in the stroller. Yeah. And then you get in the car and you're like, where'd you get those sunglasses? You know, like, and I think a lot of people are like, mm, little bonus for me. You're like, it wasn't intentional. It's almost hard. I feel like in the, I don't know what I would do. Cause I feel like in a way I would be almost nervous to go back in. Like some alarm would go off and, yeah. and I'd be like, no, I was coming back in to pay for it. And they'd be like, oh, sure you were. And then. Right. Now you have to go in the back. Yeah. Like, I feel like they would, I don't, yeah. you know, it's almost like, I, I remember once that. Oh, no, it was they, they forgot to take, uh, like, the, the tag off of a pair of jeans or something. You know, those, okay. like, security metal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it went off because I was leaving. But right. I did pay for them, and they could see the receipt and everything. But they had forgotten to take off, like, the, like, the metal thing. And But uh, the loud buzzers, like, the, the, the noise it makes, then everyone looking at you. I mean, it was 
It was very stressful. And then I, I was like, I didn't even do anything wrong. I'm going to say when this happened with the hat incident, I don't think I was – had the original and Juicy Scoop. Right. I don't think I was as well known. <laughs> now I actually think I would go back because there are cameras everywhere. And I can just imagine like those, you know, surveillance of me trying on a hat, walking and, out. Oh, and, and everyone would be like, she obviously knew what she was doing. This yeah. is the thing that she does. She puts the hat on, walks out. How do you forget a hat's on your head? She yeah, they, they yeah. show this clip. Yeah. This, yeah, of me talking about it. And they're like, this is something she's been doing for years. <laughs> How much was the hat? I mean, it's a Target hat. So I don't think there's like hats more than like $12 at Target. Okay. Even if it's like a cute sun hat. I don't know. Why don't you just donate? I look at the price. I didn't care. I was stealing it. <laughs> Why don't you just donate $12 to Target? Oh, I mean, please. I've given them enough love. Um, did you hear about this? No. This is an amazing story. This woman had an IUD. And IUDs, like anything, like all birth control, there's different – I remember we had to study in our religion class all the different um, – how good it works – all, like the percentages. Oh, okay. And like condoms was 75%. And I think the pill was like 97. And like IUD was like 94 or whatever. And then, of course, the 100% is just not fucking at all. You know, right. abstinence was always. And they're like, and if you really want to be sure, ladies, it's 100%. Anyway, so you know, also IUD- it's 100%. <laughs> Sorry. That is true. That is true. So, IUD, girl was on IUD, got pregnant, was like, okay, whatever, excited to have her baby, stuff happens. The baby was born, and in its little hand was the IUD. How is that even? Because the IUD was still there, so then the baby's growing, because the IUD, I guess, doesn't always work, right? Right. So, But it didn't disappear. She didn't, you know, release it. It's still in her uterus. So in it, it was like the baby's toy for nine months. First of all, I didn't even know what an IUD looks like. It kind of looks like a wishbone. Yeah, it's like a little thing like that. Yeah. And um, it's just amazing because it's like, the like uh, you thought, you thought this was going to work, bitch? Like, this is going to be a challenging kid from day one. Yeah, I mean, that is like the ultimate... Um... <laughs> ultimate commercial for yeah how these don't work and, yeah yeah uh, yeah the I was just actually seeing that's really funny um okay you did i talked about the P- pamela doc but you got to see it and you were like what are your thoughts on the pamela documentary i loved it i just bought the book too um because i wanted to support her after i watched the this i i thought she first of all she's so likable I remember the 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 tape and all that stuff, yeah, and right. I, you know, and not take not like thinking at the time. I mean, it is true she was the first person to ever have to deal with that, right? right. Like the internet literally was like just Starting. nobody even knew yeah. it could go like that. So to think about how she was treated versus how he was treated, and he does. I I mean, he obviously. I, I mean, he felt bad, like he didn't want it to happen either. He was protective of her and all that stuff, but he but didn't like, hate it, right? And In it didn't because recently he he accidentally. Right, posted a photo of his dick recently, so he's still known for having a beautiful penis. Right, and he wouldn't have been known for that had this not happened. So I, I do believe that he was very protective of her as well. But it wasn't obviously is what you said. It wasn't as bad for him. No, and in fact, when they showed some footage, I it got me so like riled up watching because they were showing. Um, she was talking about one night that they went to the Viper Room. And I guess it was like kind of famous. They got on camera for like screaming at the paparazzi right. and stuff. Well, then you see what the people are saying to her. Yeah. And this guy's like, where's your child, you fucking drug addict? And, like, she's like, her, her, her baby was at home with her mom. Like, yeah. they were out. I mean, you can't go out when you have a baby ever again? Like, yeah. It was so weird, like, the stuff that people were saying. And, like, right. you could hear them all, you know, that's the stuff we didn't hear. Mm. So I just thought that she came off as, like, really – I was glad she told her story. And I know that, you know, um, uh, his wife now had, like – posted a TikTok or something saying she like, just all she said was just she'd gotten a lot of I actually heard from her too like because I talked about you know everyone, and it, and it's not Pam Pam didn't do anything wrong it's more just like the bombarding of fans that went on her page 
you know, and were like mean to her. Oh, like really? they need, they need to be together. Like as if she broke them up, they were divorced for many, many, many no. years. And Pamela had already married three other people by the time Brittany had even met Tommy, and they've been together oh, for many, that's many weird. years. And so she, you know, so she just did a little post because she, she has she. Became famous on Vine. She's really funny on TikTok. Yeah. And she just beautiful. basically was like, thanks for the love and support of like knowing about us. And because it's, I haven't said that it's not fun when this stuff happens. No. I mean, you know, if your husband was married to the most famous person, beautiful in the world, like it would be hard many years later for for the fans to and that's what was heartbreaking about it was you're like oh it is sad that this didn't work out 20 right. years ago but it did no so like 20 and years she later said, yeah she's like i don't want yeah. to be with him you know right. she left him the minute you know he was a little bit abusive towards yeah. her and all that like she and she never looked back like she's like i don't want to be with him but well, she I does feel like she was looking back in this in some ways i yeah. think she's just like mis- nostalgic maybe nostalgic. i think she's just being I mean, extremely honest extremely yeah which is what made the doc nice but i did hear i heard her on howard stern and then yeah. someone else said it was on the armchair expert too which i yeah. didn't see but she she did talk he said he was asking her about her relationship with Tommy, she's like, you know, we text about the kids and stuff like that. Like, not that's it. You know, that's how we talk about the kids. But um, and she said, you know, he has a wife who's really good to him. And I and I'm really happy for him. And, you know, they they have a great marriage. And she's like, and I'm sure she hates that all this is coming up. But I, ha- you know, yeah, telling but my it's story. still my life. Yeah. yeah. So and I feel like I think the f- the part that was the worst was I totally watched the Hulu show. Yeah. And I knew it was fake. Like, I mean, false. Like, I knew this. Yes, the tape was the stolen. The scripted show. Yeah, yeah but I yeah. knew it was scripted. I knew that no one knew what conversations they had in their bedroom. Because right. yeah, neither yeah. of them had anything to do with it. But it made me feel, like, bad that, that I watched, watched it. it. Well, you know, I also saw that um, Lily James, who played her, she had to turn off her comments. I she bet. started to get all this hate. And it's yeah. like, you know, and everyone's like, God, and Seth Rogen wrote it. And, you know, he didn't think about any of that. They didn't think about any of that. They they were thinking about, about like, themselves a, a, and a great story to tell. Yeah, they thought they thought like, oh, this is a this was a famous story and this in you history. Know, let's and, tell it. Yeah, and I mean they portrayed him. They they did give her some sympathy in the show, and they portrayed him kind of you know like as just a, like a big idiot. I mean, he did pull out a a weenie dog on stage out of his pants when I saw him. <laughs> Like just a couple months ago, you did. <laughs> yeah, we, when we when Chris and Chris yeah. and I went to the the, the stadium yeah, tour, yeah. yeah, he did pull. He's like, "Does anyone want to see my wiener?" And then he pulled his wiener dog out of his pants. So I mean, well, he's kind of a, yeah, it's kind of fun. It's not the most mature. It's guy. a little wink, wink at the yeah, joke. Yeah, it yeah. was funny. But, yeah, it was totally fine. Cool. The stadium went wild for it. You know. Yeah, but um. Yeah, it just made me feel like dirty for watching the show. Yeah. Kind of. Well, you know, I I thought it was great, and then um, anyway, I I yesterday, I saw somebody that we know that I'll talk about later that was like, hey, I'm on the going on this tour with this person, second leg, and a comedian, and I was like, oh, I just know there's going to be a companion piece to this st- special that'll be the documentary of it, and um. so I wrote like a tweet and posted on Instagram too because. I thought it was so clever, but I was like, I'm just, how many more documents do we have, documentaries do we have to watch about performers is what I really meant, where we see all the same scenes of like, and and it's always the ones that the performer is actually in charge of and have final edit and stuff. And I go, these are the scenes that you constantly see, which by the way, is not this, right? which is totally not what I was talking about. And then people were like- Can you say what it was that you're talking about? I'm just talking about the in general, J Lo's, oh, Selena's, gotcha. Taylor, you know, um, Kevin Hart's, and it's slow mo walking to the jet. Um, it's a, a a moment of them being a wonderful parent, like either on the phone or with their kid right before going on stage, um, giving a childhood friend old sh- some shit, laughing right. about their old friend, telling the story of da 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 da, um, visiting a home at one time that isn't as nice as the home they have now. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, God, there was a just a just, – uh, and people were adding to them, you know. Right, that's funny. Tired, not or, you know, waking up in, in the dark, like this is how hard this person works. 
you know, like getting up to like catch a flight, you know? Like sometimes even when I'm going on the road, I'm like, why couldn't a camera be following me right now as I'm dragging this huge suitcase? It's dark out. I'm letting my family sleep. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. <sighs> How does she do it? Hero. But I'm like, you're welcome. Your loofah's and- following out of your suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> But I, what I did like is that this wasn't that. No, that's true. And I liked it. Yeah. So, but yeah. And it was nice to see how close, obviously, she is with her, her boys. And yeah, how loved, proud. loved. Yeah. And I don't part. know, Brittany, I mean, I think, like, she's gorgeous. She's super funny. They seem to have a great marriage. Yeah. Like, and I think she's, you know, gets along with the kid. Yeah. I think everyone gets along. But, right. Yeah. But it must be weird on her end to be like, Oh, let's relive like this giant, huge, like crazy love story yeah. that like and ended. people are like it can't be great when people are still dressing them <laughs> like them for Halloween. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just but that it, that's it. You know she. But I think she also on the flip flight is like, look, I know who I was marrying. I knew you know I'm marrying a famous person. Like, but yeah, it can't be fun. No, no, no. no. Um. Uh. We had that one. I just thought this was funny. This guy spent thirty thousand dollars to look like David Beckham. And someone said, "Is there a different Beckham? <laughs> Did, was it was a plastic surgery thing? It was surgery thing? It was a different? Yeah, I feel like he should Beckham? get some of his money back. I don't. He doesn't look anything like David Beckham. All it's just like a weird. It looks like a weird like doll. He just he looks like a cute guy. Yeah, that's young. Nice brows. So he has a little bit of a pudding face right now. He his brows. He went to Anastasia for his brows. <laughs> his brows look good. His his eye color is beautiful. I don't know if he." Yeah. Change that, or but he doesn't look like David Beckham. <laughs> no, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> um, and we'll end on this one Keanu Reeves fell in love at 55 and he hit his girlfriend for years. Well, now they are brave enough to hold hands in public, proving love has no age because she has gray hair and because she's 58 and he's 49. And I'm like, it's really not that big of a deal. But for Hollywood, it's like people just can't believe it. He's She's nine years older than him? Yeah. And they're calling that a big age gap? Big age difference. And I'm he's seven just years great. older than my husband. Why don't we get a cover story? Well, maybe you will. Yeah. But maybe. it won't. It, it'll just be about how brave John is. For dating an old hag. <laughs> for, bringing, for bringing her around. Um, wait. Why does it and say she's Jennifer, really cute. Why does it say Jennifer Tilly at the bottom? What does that say about actress Jennifer Tilly revealed the couple had been together for years? I guess she told the story oh. or something. I don't know. I just thought it was like Yeah, they're a cute couple. They're a cute couple. They're great. Look People make such a big is. deal about him and her and also Pierce Bronson and his wife of many years because she's like not a size two. They're like, wow, he's brave. Like, what <laughs> stop? You like, know, they have, like, kids. They've been married for, t- like, 25 years. <laughs> He's brave. Like, she's... God. I also, on that note, I don't like – I'm very body positive. Like, I like I love Lizzo's mes- message because, like I said, like, I, you know, it's about being healthy, like, the you know, and all these things. And like happy. I, yeah. And, yeah. And, like, but I, I don't like when people – talk about how like well that woman has a real body and that one has a real body because there are people that are like naturally thin thin yeah and that and they would love to have certain maybe curves and they get like you're offending everyone when you say shit like that don't you think well yeah i mean i've talked about my ass more than i would like to admit on this show but no matter how fat i get it's never going to be a bubble butt yeah I don't gain my weight there. Yeah, you just So I don't want to gain an enormous amount of weight. Right. The amount of people that are like, why don't you do some squats? Uh, You really should look into a Brazilian butt lift. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like, why aren't I being positive? Sometimes positivity is embracing your pancake ass. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Your tiny ankles. Yeah. The fact that you... Yeah, I don't want you to do squats and snap those things right in the (laughs) chest. (laughs) <laughs> you are a double zero or whatever. No, it's true. And it's like the same thing with like people, you know, hey, look up the beach, any beach picture, a crowded day in 1973 on a beach and people are all thinner. Yes. Because we ate real foods. It was before the fat-free cottage cheese and the da 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 all that yeah. stuff in the 80s that like, kind of made us crazy. But so just give everyone a break. Let them be how they want to be. Yeah. 
And don't tell them. And or when someone loses weight and they are much thinner than they was, and it's like, eat a sandwich. Yeah. You go fucking eat a sandwich. Like, this person is fine. If you didn't know them to be 100 pounds heavier five years ago, you wouldn't have a problem with the fact that they're just a, a thin person who looks great in this outfit now. Yeah. I feel like... Yeah. And, like, I get when, when where people are coming from with, like, social media and people, yeah. like, you know, photoshopping or, you know, or people that are actually trying to get super thin and all that, but that's just not everybody. So when yeah. you insult and say, like, you don't look like a real woman because they're thin, it's like, well, I, I was born with a pancake ass. What do yeah. you want me to do? Yeah. yeah. So... And let's like stop and I do and I do do squats. And actually, my Pilates instructor listened to this show. And after I talked about my ass last time, she was so awful to me and my ass that I I want to say I like it. Don't Amanda, don't make me work my ass. It <laughs> She's hurts gonna make you so work much. Extra, she was yeah. like, I don't like that you don't like your ass. I, I've noticed an improvement, and we're gonna keep doing the glutes. I'm like, oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah, just say you like it. Yeah, I like, like it. it. Love it. Love yeah. It. Don't want to work any harder. Thank you. Tell everybody about your podcast, what shows you have coming up. Um, yes, I have shows in Dallas at Hyenas, February 24th and 25th. Such a fun club, by I the way. can't wait. Good times. Please come. And then I have shows in Lowell, Arkansas, which is right outside my hometown of Fayetteville. So I Cute. need everyone to pack it out so that my family doesn't think I'm a loser. It's March 3rd and 4th. Nice. Um, and that's all on SarahColona.com. And then, yes, please listen to the podcast. It's Are You My Podcast. We cover Married at First Sight right now, which is what we're in the thick of the season right now. So for Married at First Sight watchers, I think... I think you'll enjoy it. And um, scoopers always get 20% off of my stadium approved clutch women bags. With Got to remember that. Scoop. I feel like people sometimes forget that you've clutch got to women. have that size purse. Did you take one yesterday to the Coliseum? You know what? I feel terrible. I did not. And I was so mad at myself because my purse was bigger. And I was terrified that they were going to make me. First of all, let me tell you about where we parked at the Coliseum. Oh. So. Now, we we had great seats, but we didn't have the parking pass to include because they invited a lot of people. But it was light out, and I'm like, we're early. Peter, let's, you know, there's $50 parking around the Coliseum. There's 30 There's cheaper the further you go. There's like 90 across the way, whatever. But the whole day was free. So I was like, can we just have the nice parking. park as close as possible? Peter went down the street. Now, listen, what's crazy, I used to do this when I was like 24 by myself going to an SC game because I wanted to save money. I used to park in some weird person's backyard. And I have to say, I was always okay. Yeah. But I was like, I really don't want to do this anymore, you know? Anyway, this guy, he he had tattoos that were eyelashes on his lids, oh. which I thought was kind of interesting. He was pretty masculine. I don't know if he was a drag queen on between being a gang member. I don't know what. But it was, a, it was you know... He, Looking at me, flashing his <laughs> eyes. And he's like, oh, you want to park here $50? And Peter's like, oh, $30. Peter's like, oh, okay, yeah. I'm like, Peter, no. Like, first of all, this is too far. And oh. so we go behind. And he's like, he's like, you can trust me. We have, I have six kids. I don't know why that would make me trust. <laughs> I'm like, whatever, Peter. I'm not walking back here at 8. You are coming to get me. I'm not coming back here at 8 p.m., but whatever. So I'm being nice because I'm like, mm -hmm, hi. Um Anyway, so we walk. The guy gave us the wrong direction. So I was pretty tired. We walked in. And then I was like, oh, I forgot my clutch bag. It's been like a year since I've gone to the – Yeah. And he, it was too big. And the guy just let me do it. But then my friend, she's like, fuck. She had to go back and just bring back her wallet. You guys. And so that's why everyone's got to have that clutch bag. And you've got to remember – for all the concerts and everything, you have to have this size. Thank, this is the best advertisement I've ever had for yes. it. Except I wish they wouldn't have let you in. But um, I know, but I think I didn't have to walk back to... Com. Oh, and by the way, we got our car. I did walk back okay. with my son and his friend. Because um, I'm like, I do have three people that are pretty big to walk me back. And anyway, he and his eyelashes, He'd had at this point, he'd had a couple beers with his friends. <laughs> and he was thrilled. He was like, hi, Peter. You know, it's like... <laughs> And, we, and everything was fine. Yeah. Everything was fine to park in someone's uh, driveway around the Coliseum. So yeah, just well, so you know. Okay, good. Good to know. I will look for that person if I'm ever there again. <laughs> yeah, so all of that. And I hope people go see your shows. And thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Always girl. so fun. Thank you.